Hi Josh here and you're watching 610 Bob's Teardowns where I try not to break things while tearing them apart to find out how they work. So today I'm taking apart this quadcopter. It's the uh, Sima? 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 X5. I'll put it in the description. It's a like a $50 quadcopter I got on Amazon. I've uh, been playing with it. Kind of curious what they stuck in it. So uh, let's take it apart and see if I can not break it. Okay, so, uh, where's my screwdriver? Found them! First, let's take off the wings. That was a close one. Uh, landing gear. I guess you can call them landing gear. Landing pads just popped out. No, not long enough. See if the screwdriver that came with it is long enough. It's long enough, but is it the right size? Open sesame? Of course, underneath the panel. There's always screws underneath the panel. Here we go, it's open. Wish I had more desk, desk space. So, that's interesting. The motors only have two leads. They're either small brushless motors or brushed motors. So right there is what looks like, I uh, could see that, an inductor. Two caps, cap there, cap, cap, inductor. What if, that wouldn't make any sense if the, uh, had a, if it boosted the voltage. And maybe. It could just be uh, to smooth out the power so that the motors doesn't don't cause the electronics to stop working due to lack of power. Let's unscrew the board. But it wouldn't make sense if they boosted the voltage because 3.73 voltage is what you usually get off of a LiPo, I believe. 
Wouldn't it be a would be kind of hard to power motors. But there really wouldn't be any reason to boost the voltage, you just get it more powerful. Battery. Huh, they include an extra wire. Oh, I have a feeling that's like a choke. Really cheap choke. plug for the uh, camera that it comes with. The door is starting to get annoying here. So can I flip this upside down? There's a clock and a data uh, pad. That seems like it could be used for some hacking. And a VDD and a VSS. And they labeled it. Now, that's nice. You'd need if you, someone could hack the firmware and put their own firmware on. Obviously, it would have to be custom firmware. Why do they make the chip so small? I can't tell what it is. not have a magnifying glass but I think that a three axis something nope never mind it's a It's a something. Well, now I'm curious because the writing's so small, but there's a ton of it. All right, I'm going to try to get a picture of that so I can figure out what the chips are. I'm pretty sure they're the motor controllers. Looks like a dual H bridge controller, maybe. Nope. It's either a dual half bridge or a full bridge that they bridge that they used as uh, two half bridges. There's not enough pins here to be a full bridge, I don't think. And you really wouldn't need to be full bridge because there's only the, pan, the motors only run in one direction. There's I can't see it. There's the crystal for the uh, probably microcontroller. Stupid little antenna. Little wire antenna. Probably gain some range if you swap that out for a real 2.4 gigahertz antenna. Granted, the thing won't be able to get off the ground, but you get better range. I want to pop one of these outriggers out or off.
you can see here it's geared. Which I don't entirely agree with. When I first started using it, or playing with it, you could feel the slugginess slug sluggishness of the gear setup because there's a lot more friction here, so the motor has to have a lot more torque to overcome that friction. I actually sprayed some dry lube, and that actually ha helped out quite a bit. But anyway, let's get this off. That is one tiny long motor with Chinese lettering on it. Or not lettering, whatever that whatever that's called. Sorry, I don't know what they're called, any Chinese people. Looks like the motor just kinda slides right out. Okay, so it is, it's got to be brushless because there's no room for a brush. So, it just has two magnetic coils, or two states, no, one magnetic coil, two states. And the uh, shaft for the propeller just looks like it's pressed onto the plastic gear. That's what holds it in place. So, really nothing that special. So those two chips in the back are actually N-channel MOSFETs, which makes a bit more sense because you really don't need that extra hardware to uh, control to basically a bunch of fans. They're only spinning in one direction, so you don't need to reverse it, which is what it, you would need an H-bridge for. Also, one of the chips in the front is a 3-axis accelerometer and a gyroscope. I thought they would have just used an accelerometer because it would be cheaper. But they also use a gyroscope, which is kind of interesting. Also, one of the uh, the chip in the middle, yeah, it was in the middle, uh, was actually an ARM chip. I couldn't find any uh, data sheets on it, so it's probably proprietary, but it had ARM written on it. So it's probably an ARM microcontroller. I could not see the other chip. My eyes just aren't that good, and I cannot find my stupid uh, magnifying glass thing. I actually had two of them. I have no idea where they went. So, sorry. It's probably either a, like a radio chip or a... No, that's pretty much it. It would have to be a radio chip. I don't know what else you would need. So, yeah. Oh, it does fly. I was able to put it back together. See? And it flies. I'm not going to do it here because there's no room. But just trust me. It flies. So that's it for this video. Thanks. Bye.